can see Moses really takes in his walks. <laughs> when I'm in nature alone, there is a sense of healing, right? I get time to take a step back, be reflective. But when I have the opportunity to heal with others in community, it gives you a sense of validation. What I sort of foresee as the power of like community healing is that it creates like systematic change. <laughs> My name is Tari Moore, born and raised in Washington, D.C., and I am the founder and executive director of Soul Track Outdoors. Um, I'm an outdoorsman, love being outside, um, social environmentalist, and just love bringing people and community to nature. Kristen, you look like you've been camping all your life. Right? I love it. <laughs> I first went to a summer camp in Jackson Hole, Wyoming when I was 12. And I would say that was my first traditional outdoor experience. Um, things like backpacking, starting a fire. And that was one of the first times I just sort of appreciated open space because it allowed me the opportunity to just run wild and sort of be free. The camp that I had went to brought many different youth from D.C. that looked like me, that had come from my community out to Wyoming. So there was a ton of other black kids that were in that space. We had our own sort of sanctuary almost. And so I had a very tight knit community in the outdoor space growing up as a kid that was black, like very black, um, which is very unheard of in a place like Jackson. I was able to really become really good at a lot of the stuff that I was doing, whether it was whitewater kayaking, climbing, backpacking. As I continued to get better and better at those things, I started to look at job opportunities as I started to transition to college. And a lot of times when I would take these new career opportunities, I started to become the only one. I no longer was around any other black people. And immediately that experience like shifted for me, even if it was just like not being understood or just like not being able to relate to many conversations um, or just being questioned of like why or how I got there. Once I had sort of lost this community aspect, I started to question so many things about myself because everyone else did. And it really affected my ability to sort of really step out and be brave and be confident. And I started to see myself behave in ways that I never had known myself to behave. I was a lot more silent in groups. Any opportunities to stand out further, I wouldn't take those, which would hinder my ability to learn because I couldn't practice the things that I was like hearing. I was like, you know, wow, like this is directly associated to me not feeling like I'm a part of the people that are that are around me. And so that's a direct like example for me of just like when I started to immediately apply the value of like just having a sense of um, understanding the community around you. At Morgan State University, we're doing research into helmet shapes to um, engineer a shape that's best for African American hairstyles. As I continue to like work in the space, and I led real trips um, in places like Wyoming, in Alaska, in the Southwest, um, and I was doing that professionally. Thought that that's what I really, really wanted to do: is be a trip leader, be an instructor, a guide, and years and years of like always having to sort of really sort of buffer who you were to sort of be enough for a community that you didn't necessarily fit into becomes extremely heavy. You know, you start to realize like there has to be another way to enjoy these experiences that don't require the additional baggage. And I think that that's how I got to a place of like, okay, I can do this with Soul Track. I can sort of go back to a community that looks like me, that represents like where I come from and show that there is nature in that place as well. Hey, hey. 
Soul Track Outdoors is a DC based uh, nonprofit organization. We do a lot of work connecting communities of color here in the area to different natural spaces through recreational programs, whether it's traditional outdoor sports like hiking, paddling, climbing, untraditional things like cookouts, picnics, anything that people can utilize our public parks and land for. I fell in the Shenandoah River. <laughs> <laughs> I started Soul Track knowing that there were a lot of challenges that the community faced. Like we aren't a monolith, people have different issues and just wanting to really be intentional about engaging every person's um, obstacles directly, sort of meeting them where they are. That was more scary than I thought it was gonna be. If someone expresses a fear, if someone expresses a discomfort, trying to acknowledge that and sort of create that introductory experience that sort of really caters to those fears or those needs and maybe allow them to push against that to some degree, but not to a point where it becomes um, too much work or almost traumatizing. Just both myself and our leaders understand that there is a very like competitive nature in outdoor sports just naturally and trying to decolonize that and just trying to like eliminate those expectations on any of our participants. Um, Christmas is off the first title. Yes. <laughs> As someone that was able to sort of bounce back and forth between a place like Jackson Hole in DC, you quickly realize that there's so much nature that exists beyond those very popular visualizations of the outdoors, like in the Rocky Mountains. You show people here that there are experiences to be had and I found that incredibly beautiful to sort of be able to sort of see the dynamic between nature and urban space, like collaboratively working together. And I think that those are the experiences that I try to show people here in DC is that, you know, you can't, this is our way of existing in this space and it's cool and it's beautiful. So we are in Fort Davis Park, which is literally right across the street from my house. DC um, is surrounded by S historic like Civil War forts. And um, each of those forts are connected by a trail, which is sort of like a perimeter trail. And we live right in the heart of like different battlefields that <laughs> existed in the Civil War. And I think it just like brings into context, um, just like how like DC sort of became what it was because of like it being sort of like a really active location for sort of like the, the existence of our sort of freedom, which is really, really empowering for a lot of people, but then also like very informative to like just know that we sort of are right here where a lot of this stuff happened. Culturally, you know, these spaces were inhabited by many of us and systematically we've been removed or excluded from spaces, whether that was by law, um, by sort of segregating space, or even by trauma and terror. And I think that it's really important that people understand that, you know, the people native to this land had built a very natural organic relationship with the land. And my African ancestors were masters of the land that they existed in, which they were brought over for that very reason. They were here to sort of maintenance crop because colonizers did not know how to do those things. And so ironically, we've gotten to a place where these spaces then could be used for leisure and luxury, right? And like became very exclusive and we have been pushed out. A lot of the work is to help people reclaim space. Because I think that when we can get to a place where we take ownership of the things right in front of us, it's a lot easier for us to then start to really understand our place and our ownership of all this public land, no different than anyone else has taken ownership of it as well. From a bureaucracy standpoint, understanding that we can help protect and sort of make ensure that these places are taken care of. When our community isn't present in a lot of the conversations and a lot of the politicking, that takes place um, around our environment, around our public land. And another example is like, where do we decide to develop? Where, what parks do we erase? And a lot of times those things happen in the communities that are not present. And so I believe that access allows us to sort of have a voice 
in how and where and the way that we want to protect space. And I think that that's the power of access because you then show people their power and then they also get to enjoy the, the reap the benefits of being outside. My sense of adventure is personally challenged around how I can continue to sort of curate these very beautiful experiences for people in nature.